All right, at long last, we're going to get to the other, get to the other trig functions. You'll notice we've done sine and cosine. Those, those uh, derivatives followed because of our special limits that we had when we compute these with the difference quotient. But we left out these four, and you might be wondering why, why that's the case. Well, you could do this using some other mechanism, but it's much more straightforward to do what we're going to be doing, which is this. Now that we have the quotient rule, let's put it to use. Because if we know not, we, now we know how to find the derivative of tangent, because as any decent trigonometry student knows, we can take all four of these functions and change everything in it to sine and cosine. Once you express these in terms of sines and cosines, things typically become much easier, and that's what happens here. Because this is equal to the derivative with respect to x, a sine of x over cosine of x. And now, just straightforward, I say just, apply the quotient, uh, the quotient rule. This is denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over the denominator squared, and then simplify. So in this case, yes, you are instructed to simplify. It is denominator times the derivative of the numerator. See, copy-paste. Derivative of the numerator is cosine of x minus numerator, copy-paste, times derivative of denominator, uh, denominator time, numerator times derivative of denominator. So this is negative, notice the parenthesis here, negative sine of x all over denominator squared. Now, simplify this. This is cosine times cosine. That's cosine squared. This is negative times negative is positive. Sine times sine is sine squared. This is cosine squared. But any trigonometry student worth their salt knows cosine squared plus sine squared. That's Pythagoras. That's 1. That's 1 over cosine squared. But what is 1 over cosine? 1 over cosine is secant. And 1 over cosine squared... is secant squared. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And exactly, exactly similar, an exactly similar development. In case someday somebody wants to write, just in case someday some idiot gives you an exam and wants you to write out the proof that the derivative of cotangent is what it is, you would you could develop this. And so it's not the worst idea in the world to do the same exact thing I did here with tangent. You do the same thing with cotangent, just in case some jackass asks you to write that on an exam someday, if you know what I mean. And so cotangent, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Notice, the derivative of the co is negative. The derivative of the co is negative. Guess what's going to happen? The derivative of the co is going to be negative. That's what's going to happen here pretty soon. That's not, you know, that's not some magical thing. It's just because that's the way the, al the calculus works out. And then, it's probably not too hard to see exactly what's going to happen with these. All right. So let's see what happens with secant. Well, what is secant in terms of sine and cosine? This is the derivative with respect to x. Secant is 1 over cosine. And the derivative of the quotient is the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says, we're going to have a cosine, here, let's do this one. 
it's denominator times derivative of the numerator minus numerator times derivative of denominator all over denominator squared. Denominator, copy paste, times derivative of the numerator. What's the derivative of a constant? The derivative of a constant is zero, and that term falls out. Minus numerator, copy paste, times derivative of denominator, right? Derivative of denominator. What's the derivative of cosine? Derivative of cosine is negative sine. When we simplify those negatives, are going to cancel out. All over denominator squared. All right? So let's simplify what we have here. This falls out. This is positive sine over this is cosine squared. Now, in this case, it turns out it's best to write it this way. Sine over cosine times cosine. And now I'm going to group them together in sort of an unusual way. Here, I'm going to, let, me, let me rewrite this. I'm going to group these two together. And I'm going to group this together. This is 1 times sine. 1 times sine. What is 1 over cosine? What's 1 over cosine? 1 over cosine, that's secant. And what's sine over cosine? Sine over cosine is tangent, and that's the result we're looking for. The derivative of the secant is secant tangent. The derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of sec tangent is secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. The derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of cosecant is, you see what you do? You just change it to negative and use the co-function. Change it to negative and use the co-function. So if you took d by dx of cosecant and wrote that as d by dx is 1 over sine and go through the same process, you would be able to generate negative cosecant cotangent. Just in case some doofus asks you to do that on an exam someday, it would be nice to have that written out so that you have access to it. So by hook or by crook, whether you can do this or not, I mean, it'd be, that's a great thing to be able to do because exams, exam time does roll around. But you need to know these like the back of your hand. These need to be automatic, all six of them. The derivatives need to become absolutely just bedrock. Do flashcards, do uh, make a game out of it. I don't know what you do. Memorize, get some memory device. Make sure those are well, well, firmly established in your knowledge base so that you have those derivatives absolutely bedrock fundamental. There's no room for error in any of this because everything, virtually everything that happens later on is going to build upon these things. And if you don't have that foundation, you're not going to be able to build anything. Um, and to make it even worse, later on, when we start to do integral calculus, the second half of the course, the last bit of Calc 1 and essentially all of Calc 2, there are a few exceptions, it's doing this backwards. So literally, you need to know this forwards and backwards. Well, here's the forwards part. You need to make sure that know all the derivatives. Bait just, just you have need to have them down cold. They need you need to know these. Like I said, like the back of your hand, you have it ready to go. And uh, so these need to become part of your mental furniture. Those are the derivatives of the six basic trigonometric functions.